afternoon. This is Dr. Chitra, Associate Professor of Endocrinology, Pramaya Medical College. And I'm here this afternoon uh, to discuss about certain aspects of care for yourself if you have diabetes or if you're caring for somebody who has diabetes. And uh, I think um, an interesting topic which comes up often in conversation is whether type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition, lifelong, or is there any opportunity for diabetes remission, right? So um, let me address this issue and shed, shed some clarity in this regard. So uh, there are many kinds of diabetes, but the most common is, uh, uh, most prevalent is type 2 diabetes. Okay? And uh, the other most common cause of diabetes is type 1 diabetes in which you have insulin deficiency, right? So there is, uh, as of today, um, very little chance of remission when it comes to type 1 diabetes. So for most of today's conversation, uh, will be about type 2 diabetes. Remission is um, slowly and gradually bringing down the amount of medications that you are on and maybe going off medications while making sure that your sugars are under control. It's very easy to go off medications, but to make sure that your sugars are under control while you're off medication is what is called as diabetes remission. So for a long time, uh, most, most of medical science and healthcare professionals believed that diabetes is a chronic condition which is lifelong and there is no concept as remission. But off late, there has been uh, some development in this area to shed better light. And again, I reiterate that we are talking specifically about type 2 diabetes alone. So uh, in the last year, there was one very interesting study which was done, which is called as the direct trial. It was done in uh, parts of England and Scotland. So they invited individuals who've had diabetes for about six years to participate in the study. So what they did here was, uh, they divided individuals into two groups, one group who received standard of care therapy and the other group were put on an intensive weight management program, right? So uh, they excluded individuals who were on insulin and included individuals who've had diabetes for zero to six years. And they included uh, individuals whose BMI uh, ranged from 27 to 45. So they included mildly obese to uh, 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 yeah, relevantly obese individuals involved. Yes, uh, intense counseling. They were put on uh, dietary replacement formula for a few months, and after which they were asked to go back on normal diet. Um, and there was also an exercise program to help them keep off the weight. Okay, and they followed individuals up for a few years, and what they found was quite interesting, actually. So there was a good percentage of individuals. Who, who required lesser and lesser medications with these um, changes. There were about 50% of the total population whose um, diabetes went into remission without any medication. So what was the characteristic which determined who is going to go into remission and who is going to not go into remission, right? So individuals who managed to lose 15 kgs or more and managed to keep that weight away tended to have an 80% or more chance of losing their diabetes. Individuals who lost about 8, 10 kgs or more and maintained it that way had a 50% chance of going into remission. And individuals who lost 5 kgs and maintained that weight loss had a 30% chance of remission. And less than 2% of individuals who did not manage to uh, bring about any weight change went into remission. So what this essentially means is uh, if you take individuals who are relatively new onset diabetes and if you make intensive lifestyle changes targeting weight loss and work towards maintaining that weight loss there is a very good probability of bringing your diabetes into remission. Now of course the most important caveat to this bit of information that I've shared with you is that you need to be doing this under the supervision of a healthcare professional, probably together with a healthcare professional managing you, right? Why is this important? Because as you bring about the lifestyle changes to bring about the weight loss, you will need to down titrate your diabetes medication. And if you are not able to effect the weight loss from the lifestyle changes, 
you might need to up titrate your diabetes medication so that's a crucial factor right so in all of this in all of our attempts to lose the diagnosis of diabetes or maybe reduce the requirement of uh, medications for type 2 diabetes it's important to make sure that your hpa1c is always under control right uh, so that's an important thing so if you are relatively early in the onset of diabetes and if your body weight is on the higher side this is an important conversation to open up uh, to your healthcare professionals and i think in the first few years uh, all your energies should be directed in that direction to bring down uh, your diabetes medication and maybe even push it into remission will that mean it will never come back that is a common question which is asked maybe it will come back there is no way of uh, saying that it is never going to come back right but uh, if you manage to get a few years uh, where you are of the lowest possible dose of medication, so probably in the um, uh, effective few where you go on no medications, that is still uh, a win, if you uh, let me know. But probably the most important thing is that you will still continue to need to be on follow-up. That does not mean that you can go off medications um, uh, by yourself or forget to monitor, even if you've noticed that your sugars are normal three months after you brought about weight loss. And you still need to monitor your sugars every three months. So um, I think so. That's something that you must open up conversation. And if you're asking about what lifestyle changes, right? So uh, in this trial, they used a, a replacement uh, formula-based meal, right? And then brought about the weight loss. But um, effectively, there is another um, older study which is in place, right? Which took a look at can you prevent diabetes? Can you prevent diabetes or is diabetes a condition which stays with you uh, and it's just going to happen? If you have a family history, if you're leading an unhealthy lifestyle, am I 100% sure I'm going to get diabetes? The answer to that is no. You can do everything in your mind to make sure that you don't get diabetes. I'm quite surprised uh, when in the middle of a conversation with a patient, I learned that they never thought that diabetes could be prevented. Diabetes is an extremely preventable condition. So uh, first of all, you need to identify um, whether you are at risk for diabetes, right? And how do you do that? You look around. If you have a family member with diabetes, you're at risk. If you lead a sedentary lifestyle, which most of us are leading, we are at risk. And also, if you belong to our subcontinent, which is India, please know that we are at extremely high risk. Uh, that's what is called as um, ethnic, uh, you know, predisposition to getting lifestyle diseases, especially type 2 diabetes. Um, that, that is a risk factor. If you have any other family member who has hypertension, you are at risk for getting diabetes. If you yourself are on medications for blood pressure or cholesterol, please know that you are at risk for diabetes. All of these non-communicable diseases, be it hypertension or type 2 diabetes or dyslipidemia, come from the same common soil. So if you have been um, diagnosed with your blood pressure being on the higher side, please know that uh, the same factors are contributing to uh, the progression of your pre-diabetes into diabetes. So there's one uh, very um, uh, relevant study which was done a few years ago, which is called the Diabetes Prevention Program, where they took individuals who sugars were borderline or what we call as pre-diabetes, right? So if you're talking in terms of HPA1C, if your HPA1C is anywhere between 5.7 to 6.4%, uh, uh, that is the pre-diabetes range. So they took individuals divided them into three arms. One arm, they did exactly what they were doing all along and that served as the control arm. The second arm received lifestyle changes, right, in which they were uh, given frequent interviews and frequent consults about uh, food choices, exercise choices, and then the third group received a drug called as metformin. Metformin is a drug which is very commonly used to treat diabetes, so in this uh, they tried to see if it could prevent diabetes. And they were followed up for um, three years or more, and they, at the end of three and a half years, what they noted was astonishing. The group of individuals who were put on lifestyle changes seemed to do much, much better than the individuals who were even receiving the drug in terms of preventing their diabetes, right? So up to 55% of individuals who receive lifestyle changes manage to not progress to diabetes and about 30 percent and odd uh, individuals who went on metformin were able to make sure that uh, their hba1c's do not progress to the diabetes rate 
So this is um, again reiterating the fact that lifestyle changes play an extremely crucial role in preventing diabetes and that type 2 diabetes again i'm talking about type 2 diabetes alone type 2 diabetes is an extremely preventable condition and i've also now provided evidence to you to tell you now that you've got diabetes uh, should you even consider making lifestyle changes now that you're on medications is it necessary or it is is it something that is futile if you're going to stay on medications absolutely not so bunning for weight loss especially if it is um, early on in the natural history of diabetes there is a good chance of your diabetes going into remission so lifestyle changes play a crucial role throughout the natural history of diabetes and uh, somebody else might ask me i've had diabetes for 10 years you only spoke about individuals who have new onset diabetes is there any chance in uh, is there any point in me exercising why should i exercise at all so uh, the other benefits of exercise are numerous, right? So you might have noticed that at the start of the illness, you might be on one medication. Then after a couple of years, you're probably going on two medications. And then three or four years down the road, you're probably on three medications. And you would have heard of stories of how some individuals uh, were told that all the medications that are amenable for use in them um, are used at full dose. And yet sugars are not reaching targets. So they might need to go on insulin. So what this natural history of diabetes tells you is that it is a progressive disease. Uh, by progressive disease, we mean it changes with time or the amount of medications required to bring your HPMC under control keep, keeps increasing. And this is primarily because the part of your uh, beta cell uh, which secretes your insulin is the one which determines whether um, your sugars are controlled with one tablet or if you need three or four tablets. So the ability of your beta cells to make insulin comes down with age. Now this comes down with everybody, even individuals who don't have diabetes. There is an age related drop in the amount of insulin secreted by your beta cells. In individuals with diabetes, when your diabetes was detected itself, your beta cells are producing slightly lesser insulin than the other individual who does not have diabetes. But if it stayed just at that point, life would be simpler. But uh, the truth in reality is that with time, even after your diagnosis of diabetes, the amount of insulin production keeps coming down. So that explains why your doctor is asking you to come in every three months with the HPMC check and also why you need to go on adjusting your uh, medications for diabetes. So when you put in place a systematic lifestyle modification or uh, getting uh, exercise every day, getting your sleep uh, of seven to eight hours every, every day and paying attention to uh, what food you eat every day, what happens is the rate at which this progression occurs can be slowed down. The slope which is steep can be tilted down, right? So that's the advantage of continuing to invest in lifestyle changes and exercise even after the diagnosis of diabetes and apart from the effects of exercise on glycemic control alone there are numerous other benefits related to lifestyle changes so with exercise your blood pressure is likely to improve your lipid parameters are likely to improve your cardiac you know capacity is likely to improve the collateral blood supply in your heart is likely to improve so with age all of us develop certain blocks in the blood vessels which supply our heart. Okay, that is called the coronary circulation. And every time you exercise, um, the heart has a way of building collateral circulation, which is bypassing the obstruction to still make sure that the blood supply reaches to the end organ of the heart, which is the cardiac uh, muscle cell. Right? So, with exercise, every time you exercise, you're pushing the heart to generate a good collateral circulation to bypass the blocks which are there in the main artery. So that's one um, reason why you should um, exercise. Apart from that, with exercise, uptake of glucose at the level of your muscle improves. Also, removing stores of glycogen from your uh, liver occurs when you're recovering from exercise. And uh, muscles are uh, the furnaces where energy is burnt. So when you invest in building muscles, by doing some amount of uh, weight training or resistance training apart from your normal um, uh, 
aerobic cardio exercise you uh, tend to go into a phase right after exercise where the muscle is continuing to burn energy even after you stopped exercising you will realize that um, if you are taking medications for diabetes that after a rigorous uh, form of exercise let's say a swim or an intense badminton game or a tennis game you will see that your sugars might be dropping for the next four to six hours after you stopped playing right uh, after you stopped exercising so these are all the many reasons why um, it should be a part of our life and um, also if you have um, type 2 diabetes yourself it also makes sense to get your children uh, on board with the lifestyle changes so if one of us has uh, type 2 diabetes our children are at risk for getting type 2 diabetes and one of the days when type 2 diabetes was a disease of middle age where you had where you could think that um, I, I can wait till 40s and 50s till I check my sugars and um, I'm not going to get it in my 20s and you will be surprised at uh, the number of individuals in their 20s who are diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia is extremely common but probably what's most alarming is that it's now not uncommon for young children less than 18 years aged 14, 15, 8, 9 years getting type 2 diabetes right so uh, more and more children do not have the uh, facilities to get any physical activity because they are all too busy studying they are too busy attending too many classes in the evening there is too much of opportunity for indulgences to happen very frequently uh, in terms of uh, socializing and ordering out food and access to uh, junk food access to food which is extremely energy dense so it's extremely uh, common now especially during this time of exams where children are sitting for about 12 to 16 hours in their 10 standards and 12 standards to get their studying done to be diagnosed with diabetes so uh, with type 2 diabetes that is what is shocking so if you are a parent who has type 2 diabetes not all socializing or time spent with family need to be revolving around activities which involve eating or sitting family time can also be time which is spent exercising together so going to the park with your children picking up a sport with your children and playing with them at least a couple of times a week uh, is a good event and also getting them to the habit of um, enjoying a walk with you in the evening is a, are also good things so of uh, very often we have parents coming in with their teenage kids uh, dealing with let's say excess weight or maybe polycystic ovary syndrome in girls um, or even slightly elevated blood sugars or pre-diabetes in children and they look at us and tell us please can you convince her or him uh, to get some exercise it's difficult to change behavior or implement new habits healthier habits when they are smaller they are more likely to mirror your healthy habits so if you are uh, invested in your health if you are invested in your exercise plan if you are invested in your healthy eating plan are likely to think that is part of routine and normal and uh, invest their energies to do that and when you are uh, when you have children who are much younger in preschool or school they're likely to go out with you to the park to uh, spend time with you versus let's say a teenager uh, who's asked to go for a walk with you so consider this time as a excellent opportunity for you to teach them how to stay active and um, uh, adopt healthier changes to start with because when they grow up uh, they have to make choices for themselves whether it is the food they eat or the activities they do and uh, what they've learned in their childhood is something that is going to stick along and I don't think that there is any greater investment that you could do um, uh, to your child um, uh, apart from maybe inculcating the habits which is likely to give them great health and uh, a great life from there on so quickly to summarize all that um, we've been through in this session um, lifestyle changes are an extremely important part of prevention of type 2 diabetes even attempting remission of type 2 diabetes and also in better management of type 2 diabetes apart from the myriad effects or, or benefits of exercise or blood pressure control cholesterol control improving your cardiovascular risk and all of that put together and type 2 diabetes is a preventable condition so efforts towards prevention of diabetes should be on 
uh, years and years before, maybe even in childhood. And um, diabetes remission in type 2 diabetes is a conversation which is a very valid conversation to open up with your healthcare professional. So if your diabetes um, is recent onset, if you're not on too many medications, please initiate the conversation with your endocrinologist to talk about what changes are likely to give you the greatest likelihood of bringing down um, weight and maybe then uh, cutting down the requirement of medications and probably even hoping for diabetes remission. Please remember it's best to attempt these changes uh, under the supervision of your endocrinologist and frequent follow-up irrespective of what is going on. You will need to get your uh, three months average which is your HPA1C checked every three months and make sure it's on point whether it is with drugs or without drugs or with insulin or without insulin. And I'm hoping that this interaction was useful and I'm hoping that um, if you have any questions to ask me, I'm uh, ready to take it. If not, I'm hoping that uh, you take away this and try and make small changes to uh, incorporate healthier changes in our life. So when I say exercise, it need not be an hour or an hour and a half spent every day in the gym. All of us are trying to juggle too many things, we are working too many hours, we are traveling too many hours. So um, it need not be an exercise format which is as intense as that. It could be just a small improvement from where you are at. So if you are at uh, no exercise at all, you could start with just a 10 to 15 minute walk or 10 to 15 minute workout just at the start of the day or just at the end of the day. And just that you need to do it consistently. Remember that these are not changes that you start with to see changes, to see benefits right away. If you're starting out uh, at, at uh, zero, right? You're, these are uh, changes which you're starting out to build a habit. So this is a thing which should become a part of our life. So we wake up in the morning and we brush our teeth, right? We don't need our mothers to coax us to brush our teeth. Now at least I'm hoping... Uh, that's not the truth. Uh, but we all wake up and brush our teeth. We don't question it. We don't skip it. We don't do any anything like that. So it's become part of our life, right? So um, getting up and moving intensely and getting your exercise should also become a habit which is built like that. So start small, stick to it, keep consistent, and work towards increasing the progression of either the intensity or the time. Good luck and wishing you all happy health. Thank you so much.